How are you guys doing? Today is Wednesday, September 30th, 2020, out here in this quarantine. I'm James Sims, and for this episode of The Elite, I'm going to take you through yesterday's Elite performances, um, of course, through yesterday's Elite players as well. Of course, baseball started yesterday, although there's playoff basketball that starts today. And of course, I'm going to lead you and walk you through what to look forward to today in terms of what's going on in the sports world. But to start off with the NBA, Game one of the NBA Finals is scheduled tonight. Um, at 9 o'clock on ABC as the fifth seed in the East, the Miami Heat, will take on the first seed in the West, the Los Angeles Lakers on ABC. Um, a, a, a very a big matchup that I think a lot are looking forward to, especially myself, and I'm going to try to watch every second of that game. And then, of course, I'll give you coverage of it, or I'll just go over it tomorrow once the game is completely done. Jumping out to the WNBA just to show you what's going out in that playoff bubble. Um, last night, it was Game 5 of the WNBA semifinals matchup between the Las Vegas Aces and the Connecticut Sun. And in this game, the Las Vegas Aces would beat the Sun by 4, 66-63, led by Aja Wilson, who won the 2020 um, WNBA MVP. She finished with 23 points and 11 rebounds on the night as Alyssa Thomas did her best to try to get the, to keep the Connecticut Sun in it. She finished with 22 points and 10 rebounds. But at the end of the day, the Aces would win it in five and they are slated to play against the Seattle Storm on Friday, September 2nd at 7 o'clock on ESPN2. Um, really quickly taking you out to what's been going on with soccer. Um, only one big matchup yesterday and that was a Carabao Cup matchup between the Tottenham Hotspur in the Chelsea in the Chelsea Football Club, um, Timo Werner, their the, uh, Chelsea's new striker from, I want to say RB Leipzig. He scored their first goal of the game. He scored his first goal for Chelsea, and then of course Lamella would score for Tottenham, and then it would go to penalty kicks, but Tottenham would advance. And then looking forward to today's matchups, especially among the Tier 1 clubs. Um, the German Super Cup is going to occur at 2.30 as Bayern Munich take on Borussia Dortmund. Two, they're basically Germany's two top teams, so that's going to be a very big one. And of course, it's Der Klassiker. Looking out to the Serie A, Internacional is going to take on Benevento um, as Zormelo Lukaku and Laura Martinez look to try to inflict more damage on the Serie A. Looking out to La Liga, Atletico Madrid takes on Huesca as now Atletico Madrid is looking like a very formidable opponent now that Luis Suarez has, has, inflicted, uh, his, has inflicted his pain in, the La, in La Liga, this time no longer for Barcelona. Also, Real Madrid is going to take on Real Valladolid. Um, at 3.30 at, at 3.30 as well. Um, and looking at the English Carabao Cup for the matchups today, Manchester City is going to take on Burnley at 2 p.m. And then Brighton and Hove are going to take on Manchester United at 2.45. Those are the big soccer matchups, of course, to look forward to. And, of course, with football not starting until tomorrow, I won't get into I won't get into football for a bit. And with hockey done, I'm going to jump into playoff baseball. If you guys are aware, yesterday was the first day of the wild card round of action for the MLB, for the MLB playoffs. And in this one, Let's start off with the first game of the night. Um, in the first game of the night, the third seed Minnesota Twins would go on to host the sixth seed Houston Astros. And the Astros would end up beating them 4-1 to one after scoring three runs in the ninth to break their 1-1 one to one tie. Um, for the Minnesota Twins, Kenta Maeda would make the start. He would allow no earned runs in five innings pitch, striking out five batters on the day. On the offensive side of the ball, Nelson Cruz would be he would finish one for three with the only RBI of the day for the Twins as Max Kepler, their right fielder, went 0 for 2 with a run. He had the only run on the day. Looking at how Houston fared, Zach Grinke would make the start. He would he would allow one earned run in four innings pitch, striking out one batter. But then they ended up subbing in Framber Valdez for the last five innings of the game, and he would allow no earned runs in five innings pitch, striking out five batters. Looking at how Houston on the offensive side of the ball, their center fielder George Springer would go one for five with an RBI and a run. Um, their Elite second baseman Jose Altuve would go 0 for 3 with an RBI as he walked twice. He had the game winning RBI. I mean, he walked with the bases loaded. Great at bat. Their designated hitter, Michael Brantley, would go 2 for 5 with two RBIs. Both those RBIs coming in the ninth inning to put them up from 2 1 to 4 1. Um, their elite third baseman, Alex Bregman, would go 0 for 4 as he walked. And their shortstop, Carlos Correa, would go 1 for 2 as he walked twice and he scored off of one of the walks. Um, and with this, the Houston Astros now take a 1 nothing lead over the three seed Minnesota Twins. Minnesota Twins have to completely win out to advance. Houston Astros just have to win one more game. 
Uh, jumping out to the second game of the night, or the second game of the day, I mean, the Oakland Athletics, the second seed in the American League, went on to host the seven seed Chicago White Sox, and the White Sox were able to completely take advantage of the Oakland Athletics. Um, Jesus Lazardo would pick up the loss for the Oakland A's. He would barely pitch over three innings. He would allow five, or he would allow three runs and strike out five batters in his 3.1 innings. On the offensive side of the ball, not much was going for the A's. The only RBI would go to their center fielder, Ramon Laureano, but he finished 0 for 3 on the day. Looking at how Chicago fared, Lucas Giolito would pitch 7 innings, allowing 1 earned run, striking out 8, and I believe he carried a perfect game into the 6th. Um, but looking at how their offense did, their shortstop, Tim Anderson, would go 3 for 4 with a run on the day. Their designated hitter, Yasmani Grandal, would go 1 for 4 with an RBI and a run. He had his first home run of the playoffs last night, or yesterday, I mean. Jose Abreu, their first baseman, would go 2 for 4 with 2 RBIs and a run, and that's the RBI king doing what he does best. Um, he had his first home run of the playoffs, and their right fielder, um... Adam Engel would go two for four with an RBI and a run as he hit his first home run of the playoffs yesterday too. And with this, the Chicago White Sox lead that series one to nothing and they face off today to continue that series. Jumping on to the third matchup of the night, the first seed Tampa Bay Rays took on the eighth seed um, Toronto Blue Jays. And in this one, the Rays were able to win three to one. Looking at how the Blue Jays fared, Shoemaker would get the start for Toronto. Matt Shoemaker would allow no earned runs in three innings pitch, striking out two. Um, and then the loss would get would get attacked to Robbie Ray, who would pitch three innings and allow one earned run, striking out five. It was a great pitching performance between both teams. Tampa Bay just got out to a 3 nothing lead, and Toronto could only score one run. Looking at how Tampa Bay did on the offensive side, or defense side, I mean. Blake Snell would pick up the win. He would allow no earned runs in a little under six innings pitch, striking out nine batters, allowing one hit on the day. Um, looking at how they did offensively, their second baseman, Brandon Lau, would go one for four. Their left fielder, Otto Sarena, would go one for four with a run as well. Will Margot is the only, or Manuel Margot is the only player on their team who had more than one hit. He finished two for three with two RBIs and a run. He had his first home under the playoffs in the seventh inning to put the Rays up 3 nothing, um, But with this, like I said, the top-seeded Toronto or Tampa Bay Rays now are up over the Toronto Blue Jays 1-0 as their series continues today as well. And then going on to the last game of the night, the Cleveland Indians sitting at the fourth seed with the second best with the, with the second best record in the AL Central. They took on the New York Yankees, the fifth seed with the second best record in the AL East. And the Yankees would go on to dominate the Indians 12-3. to um, Going out to the Indians, Shane Bieber, the Major League Triple Crown pitching winner. Of course, he's he led Major League in wins, strikeouts, and I want to say ERA. In this game against the Yankees, he would pitch 4.2 innings, allowing seven earned runs and striking out seven batters. He allowed nine hits as well. A, a game that's not typical Shane Bieber, especially this season. Looking at how their offense did, they're elite shortstop Francisco Lindor would go 0 for 4 as he struck out twice their third baseman Jose Ramirez would go 1 for 3 as he had an RBI their left fielder Josh Naylor by the way would go 4 for 4 with an RBI and two runs um, he had his first home run of the playoffs in the fourth inning off Garrett Cole and then speaking of Garrett Cole Garrett Cole would only allow two earned runs um, in seven innings pitch striking out 13 batters on the day looking at how their offense fared their second for the Yankees, their second baseman, uh, DJ LeMahieu, would go two for five with an RBI and a run. Um, continuing on, their right elite right fielder Aaron Judge would go one for five with two RBIs and a run. He had his first home run of the playoffs last night. Their center fielder Aaron Hicks would go zero for three as he walked twice and scored twice. Their first baseman Luke Voigt would go two for five with an RBI and a run as he would go on. No, he 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 had a really good game as well. Their elite designated hitter John Carlos Sand would go one for five with an RBI and a run. He had his four his first home run of the playoffs as well. Their shorts, their early shortstop, Glaber Torres, I think would have the performance of the day. He would go four for four with three RBIs and three runs. Uh, Glaber Torres would hit his first home run of the playoffs as well. And then their left fielder, Brett Gardner, would go three for five with three RBIs and two runs as he hit his first home run of the night last night as well. Garrett Cole now 1-0 and in the playoffs. And with this series lead, the Yankees are now one game away from in eliminating the Cleveland Indians and moving on to the next round. Um, so that's everything that happened yesterday looking forward to today because yesterday was all american league wild card matchups now they're going to enter now they're going to have some of the national league teams play starting off at 12 at high noon it'll be the matchup in the national league east 
or the National League between the seventh ranked Cincinnati Reds and the second seed Atlanta Braves. Trevor Bauer is going to make the start for Cincinnati and he's probably, he looks as though he might be the player that wins the NL Cy Young this year. But Max Fried isn't a scrub either. He's going to start for the Atlanta Braves. And of course, you still have to worry about both offenses. They're going to face off on ESPN. Um, an hour later at one o'clock, the Houston Astros will, or yeah, the Houston, or the Twins will take the mound as Jose Barrios will take on Jose Urquidy, um, as the Twins take on the Astros on ESPN two. At two o'clock on ABC, the six seed Miami Marlins are going to take on the third seed Chicago Cubs and Wrigley as Sandy Alcantara is going to match up against Kyle Hendricks. At 3 o'clock on ESPN, it'll be Game 2 of the matchup between the Chicago White Sox and the Oakland A's. The White Sox currently lead that series 1-0. Dallas Keuchel is going to take the mound for the White Sox as Chris Bassett takes the mound for the Oakland A's. Um, at 4 o'clock on TBS, the Toronto Blue Jays and the Tampa Bay Rays are going to face off for their Game 2. The Rays lead that series 1-0 as Tyler Glass now takes the mound for them. He's going to face off against Hyunjin Ryu, arguably one of the best pitchers in baseball this past season. Um, continuing at 5 o'clock on ESPN2, it'll be game one of the NL wildcard series between the fifth seed St. Louis Cardinals and the fourth seed San Diego Padres. Kwang Hyun Kim is going to make the start for, San, for St. Louis, and he hasn't been able to be stopped, at least this season. He's going to face off against Chris Paddock at Petco Park. Um, and two hours after that game starts, the New York Yankees are going to take on the Cleveland Indians at 7 o'clock on ESPN for game two. The Yankees lead the series 1-0 after yesterday's win. Masahiro tonight Naka will make the start for the Yankees as Carlos Carrasco will make the start for the Indians. Um, and then last but not least, jumping to the final game of the night at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, it'll be game one of the National League Wild Card Series between the Los Angeles Dodgers and the Milwaukee Brewers. The Brewers finished with the eighth best record in the National League, the fourth best record within their own division. The Los Angeles Dodgers finished the season with the best record in all of baseball. Brent Suter is going to make the start for the Milwaukee Brewers for game one as he's going to face off against Walker Bueller of the Los Angeles. Angeles Dodgers. Um, and with that said, I appreciate you for listening to all 11, 12 minutes of this piece. Um, I hope all is well. And once again, it is Wednesday, September 30th, 2020 out here in this quarantine. Um, like I said, I hope all is well. Thank you for listening to my piece and peace out.